Today on Locked on Buckeyes, we discuss Marvin Harrison Jr.'s chances to win the Heisman this year and if we'll see a change with the Buckeyes' offensive line. You are Locked on Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Buckeyes for Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is Tuesday, November 14th in the year 2023. And today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply during today's episode we will discuss if there might be a change on the Buckeyes offensive line and if the Buckeyes will fall in the college football rankings which come out tonight and also if you like to continue the conversation outside of the space of this podcast head to subtext.com slash Locked on Buckeyes. But first, Rockman Marv, Marvin Harrison Jr., Maserati Marv, as Gus Johnson called it, no matter what you want to call that man, he is a dog. That's a great way to describe Marvin Harrison Jr. on the football field. He is a dog. He is that dude. I mean, there's so many phrases and catchphrases or words to describe what Marvin Harrison Jr. is on the football field. It's amazing. He is a lot of fun to watch. And in the preseason, there was a lot of conversation about route man Marv, his chances to win the Heisman this year. Knowing that as a receiver, it's really, really, really hard for you to do that. But I came on here and said, he's kind of setting himself up to have the opportunity to win that award this year as a wide receiver. One, because he's really, really good. I mean, really, really good. But two, he plays at a school that loves to emphasize and get the receiver involved every single game, which is why if you're the top dog or maybe the the second dog at Ohio State, there's a good chance you might have big numbers in any given year. Before the season started, there was a storyline about Route Man Marv that said if he's in the Heisman Trophy conversation, well, Kyle McCord will be in there with him. And I didn't really buy into that like some did. I do understand where people are coming from that, well, hey, maybe the guy that is getting him the ball is a is a reason why. And the voters, Heisman, Heisman voters, will look at the quarterback and say, well, if he's good enough. Then that guy slinging him the rock is going to be good enough as well. And he'll be in the conversation. And some thought that Kyle McCord would be more of a Heisman front runner or more of a contender then Marvin Harrison Jr. And honestly, in the grand scheme of things, to a lot of people, that makes a lot of sense. Buckeyes have played 10 games so far this year. 11th game is coming up. The 12th game after that is coming up in about a week and a half from now. There's plenty of time for Ben Marv to be to get better. There's plenty of time for Kyle McCord to get better as well. But as I recently looked at the numbers for, for Marvin Harrison Jr. and I also looked at the betting odds from our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Um, well, I don't see Route Man Marv and Kyle McCord there at the same time. The numbers, as they're slowly coming up, let's go to the Heisman Trophy betting odds from our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. Bo Nix is a betting odd, betting favorite right now, minus 110. Number two, Michael Penix Jr. at plus 370. Both players play for teams. That'll be in the Big Ten Conference next year. Bo Nix at Oregon and Michael Penix Jr. at Washington. Jaden Daniels at plus 370. Plus 600 is Marvin Harrison Jr. At five, it's at plus 3,500 is Carson Beck. That seems odd to me. I thought he would be a little bit closer than that. Then you got Jalen Milrow, plus 5,000. Jordan Travis, plus 6,000. J.J. McCarthy at plus 12,000. Then Dylan Gabriel, Caleb Williams, and Drake May. Yes, the quarterbacks are going to be getting a lot of attention, but so well, Marvin Harrison Jr. And 
I, I don't, I'm not surprised that we don't see Kyle McCord there. Many people will tell you he had to be there. And I said, oh, well, you got to wait and see how McCord plays because McCord can still sling that rock to Harrison Jr. and not be in the Heisman Trophy conversation. It's because that's just the way things go in sports. And what we're seeing now is when Marvin Harrison Jr. was out there on the field, outside split wide, in trips in the middle, in trips on the inside, on trips on the outside, if he's in a slot, traditional slot with two wide receivers on one side, he could motion around. He took a ball to the end zone for a 19-yard touchdown run over the weekend, the first Buckeye touchdown against Michigan State on Saturday night. He can do it all. So there was a myth, and I say debunking a storyline. It's not a current storyline, more of a preseason storyline, but we have enough data to go ahead and make that debunking come out. You know me. I don't want to come out here and make statements and say, well, this, 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 and this, and not have enough data or enough games under our belt to be able to make bold proclamations like this. Earlier this year, we even discussed how we didn't have, after games two or game three, we didn't have enough data to know what the Buckeyes would be offensively or defensively or even as a team. But now we know the Buckeyes offense, what they can do. And they want some more consistency. We want to see some improvement in some areas, but we know what they can do. You also want to see, you also know the defense, their makeup what they can do, even with some injuries to key players, Josh Proctor, Lathan Ransom, who might be out for an extended period of time. Hint, hint, it's probably something we're gonna, that's probably something we're going to discuss tomorrow. And then you also have Denzel Burke miss time. Um, you had Tommy Eichenberg who missed the game a week ago. You've had guys like uh, Still Chambers play bigger roles this year. Cody Simon play bigger roles this year. Chambers has started every game, but being more versatile is a big reason. And also taking on more responsibility is huge as well. You've had contributions and players stepping up, playing big time. in Michael Hall Jr., who left the game recently, and Tyleek Williams, who has been playing out of his mind this year, to him a little while on Sawyer. I mean, literally, this team, as we look at it, it's phenomenal. But we had to wait a little bit to figure out, hey, would this storyline make sense or does it not? Also, there's a storyline that maybe even trickled into the regular season. It's not a storyline anymore. If it is, just debunk it. Say it's false. Say it don't make no sense. Because somebody's saying Kyle McCord is going to be in New York at the Heisman Trophy ceremony with Marvin Harrison Jr. saying it right now at this point of the season on November 14th. Buddy, that don't make no sense. Because nobody, but almost, excuse me, most people don't believe that's going to happen. That's exactly the thing that needed to come out. Kyle McCourt's really, really good. Route Man Marv is elite. It's fun watching him play the football. And as some people would say, McCourt has to be in New York at the Heisman ceremony. If Harrison Jr. has a chance to win the Heisman Trophy this year. No, no. Doesn't need to happen. Coming up next, we'll discuss that there's going to be a possible change on the Buckeyes starting off with the line moving forward. That's coming at you next on Locked on Buckeyes. But first, this episode is brought to you by our friends at Jace Medical. We spend a lot of time talking together, you and I. We get fired up together on wins and losses. Who starts? And who sits? I'm thankful for that connection we have. And today, I want our chat to be a little more personal. Whether you're on extended travel, bracing for a major weather event, or limited by yet another supply shortage, you are covered, my friend. Thanks to our partners at Jace Medical. Life-saving antibiotics and a long list of daily medications can be ordered in a one-year supply. Even ED generics for Cialis, Viagra, Revatio, prescriptions. Go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember to use promo code LOCKED on at checkout for a discount as well. If you or someone you love would get some peace of mind by having a year supply of any daily med, go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Remember to use promo code LOCKED ON for $20 off your purchase. Thank you for making Locked On Buck Guys your first listen or first watch of every single day. 
Now is the perfect time, unless you're driving or at the gym, on the treadmill, at school. Now is the perfect time for those of us that are not moving around and where it may harm us by getting on our phone and searching something or get us in trouble with our job. Go to Locked on Buckeyes. Subscribe to the show on the YouTube, Apple Podcast app, Spotify, or wherever you get your fine podcasts. So over the weekend, there was a moment in the second half. Carson Hensman comes out. Matthew Jones slides over one spot to his left. Enoch Vamahi comes in to play right guard. And the four starters outside of Carson Hensman stayed on the field. Your left tackle with Simmons, left guard with Jackson, center with Jones, right guard with Enoch Vamahi, and then right tackle with Josh Fryer. And so in the moment, you're probably wondering, and I was as well, oh, he's trying to get somebody to run at a different position for numerous reasons, just because you can do that right now when the game is out of hand. But then there's a thought. Is this a sign of things to come with the Michigan game in a couple weeks? Because I don't believe this is a move that Ryan Day makes or potentially makes or Justin Fry even throws at his head coach if you're not thinking about doing this down the road. Now, why would Ohio State want to pull Carson Hensman, maybe play Enoch Mahi at right guard and Matt Jones at center? Well, Matt Jones was recruited as a center. He came to Ohio State, kind of found his footing uh, at guard, um, stayed there at guard, and even in the offseason during the long offseason center competition there are numerous people out there that were saying hey just move matt jones to center you can figure out who your right guard would be after that okay that's a thought and honestly it's a realistic one even though matt jones hadn't played center in his book career until this past saturday evening that's a realistic thought but then there's a thought that i say michigan because Michigan's interior deep into line is really 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 good and some have said carson hensman is the weak link on the Buckeyes' offensive line. And I was thinking about this in my evaluation of the O-line. I love O-line play and evaluation there. There has been some penetration and some issues there on the interior. And I don't have the somewhat the knowledge or the eye to pick and depict and figure out what exactly is exactly going on, which is why I have not come on here and said, hey, I know this, I know this, I see this, I see that. I have not come out here and made those statements because, well, did, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that statement being made yet because I see some weak links or a potential weak link on the offensive line. I'm not saying Carson Hensman is exempt from the conversation. I just don't know enough, and I'm not ready to make a comfortable making that bold statement that Carson Hensman is the weak link on the Buckeyes' offensive line. But I wonder if Ryan Day and Justin Fry will try to do something similar this weekend against Minnesota. Minnesota is one of those teams that Ohio State should also they should destroy, obliterate. It should not be a contest. Why? Because they're not in Ohio State's nowhere near where Ohio State is on the field. That's just the fact. Um, Minnesota is 5-5. Five and five. They're not really a good football team. Uh, P.J. Fleck, I really like him as a coach. He's a good motivator. You can believe in him. Um, he's had some good Minnesota football teams. This ain't one of them. Now, this same Minnesota football team that's not really all that good did some things against Purdue this past weekend where the first half there were a lot of points scored by both teams, Purdue and Minnesota. That was more of an evenly matched matchup. So I do know that Minnesota can do certain things offensively. Defensively, though, it's kind of just like it was against Michigan State. The Buckeyes should be able to do whatever they want to do the entire game. I I saw um, Sheffield and Maccabee from Purdue uh, go outside and Minnesota was not able to contain the edge and both of them got loose on the outside. And if you mean to tell me Sheffield can get loose and if you mean to tell me and I saw with my eyes, Maccabee got loose, Buddy Harrison could get loose as well. So can Chip train him. Like, I understand that his role is not what I even thought it was going to be at this point of the season. But still, he can get loose on the outside as well. Uh, how bad is Minnesota? The Buckeyes are currently... 27 and a half point favorites. That comes from our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook, and the over under is set at 48 and a half. So if you want to bet, if you want to bet that, go ahead. Be my guest. I would say maybe 
under on the over under, but over on the um um the Buckeyes will cover the spread. That, that's where I sit now. Now, if that gets up to 30 or 31, 31 and a half, we'll have a different conversation later in the week. I also don't think it'll jump two and a half to three points between this point and the start of the game. But crazier things have happened. If the Buckeyes decide to move Carson Hensman out, put in Matthew Jones at center, put in, well, move over Matthew Jones at center, and then put in Enoch Bamahi at right guard, do I think it's a formula for success? I would love to come on here and say yes. I trust Matthew Jones, and he has gotten better throughout the season. But I don't know if maybe a quarter's worth or two quarter, a half worth of a plays is enough, or let's just say it comes down to 30 to 40 snaps between the second half against Michigan State and this game coming up uh, against Minnesota, that that five would play off of the line against Michigan. I don't know. I I can't say that I'm super comfortable with it, even though, yeah, I would love to come on here and say, yeah, that's that's where we sit. Yeah, that's where we are. I, I don't know. I have no idea. And so it's a very tricky time period to potentially make this move. Think about you in your life, in your job, personal life, um, work life, home life, whatever it may be. Think about you and you have a big event coming up. May it be a birthday party. May it be a cake you're baking for somebody. Um, may it be a big trip to Hawaii, wherever it is. And you know when you go on big trips or you bake a cake or you set up birthday parties, you have everything lined up. You know exactly what to do. And it's not, it's not set in stone perfect. But generally, if something goes wrong, you are able to fix the issue quickly because you know how to fix that issue. Then all of a sudden, somebody says, hey, your party. Now, you start planning for this party six months before it starts because it's big. It's big, man. It's big. And then all of a sudden, you're saying somebody comes to you two weeks before this big event. You're saying, well, uh, let's do this. It is not let's do this as definitely let's do this. It's, hey, here's an idea. It's a big idea. It'll make things potentially better. However, however, it's going to take a lot of work on your part and it might keep you up at night, might stress you out. It's kind of where we are. Now, Ohio State's been working for this game for longer than six months. The Ohio State-Michigan game is, to some people, bigger than a trip to Hawaii. It is bigger than a birthday party to some. It is bigger than a work trip to some. It's bigger. It's, it's a big event, man. It's a huge deal. I don't know if that move is what the Buckeyes want to do or need to do going into the game against Michigan. Based off the limited sample size, you might get this five working together in a game setting. Now, I don't know if they've been doing it in practice. There's a good chance they have. However, practice in the game. Two different things. Practice in a game against Minnesota. Going into a game against Michigan, they're different. So, if that's something we, we might see down the road, it's possible. It is possible. But if that's a change, expect some hiccups. Especially if you're doing it for the game. Because they're the Wolverines interior D-line and that defense as a whole is really, really good. And that change, that alteration, even though it might in theory be a good one could come back to hurt the Buckeyes coming up next we will discuss if the Buckeyes will fall in the college football playoff rankings the new rankings which come out tonight but first this episode is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs these days every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business, you want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's free and easy to create a job post at LinkedIn Jobs. Once you create your job post, add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions, Make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize 
who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on calls. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on calls to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. This episode is also brought to you by Billiards Plus. Billiards Plus has the best selection of pool tables, game tables, shuffleboard tables, and more. And the best service in Central Ohio. And did you know Billiards Plus has top-of-the-line grills with up to 30-year warranties? That's longer than most roofs. Billiards Plus carries the best pool tables from Brunswick, Alhassen, Canada, Billiards, and more. Plus, top-of-the-line grills from PK, Napoleon, Memphis, and La Griddle. That could very well be the last grill you own. The perfect gift for any occasion is in stock at Billiards Plus. Go big with an awesome pool table or shuffleboard table or a little more modest with a dartboard or poker table. No matter the season, Billiards Plus has you covered for all your indoor and outdoor entertainment needs. And the people at Billiards Plus are the best part of the experience. Kenny, Sarah, and the whole staff will take amazing care of you. Billiards Plus, visit the... Visit their showroom on Dublin Center Drive in Dublin. Thank you for making Locked on Buck, guys. Your first listen or first watch of every single day tonight. This week's college football playoff rankings will be released. It'll be on ESPN. And I don't know. I know at some point, I think it's tonight, the but the Rankings will be released at at in between games of the Champions Classic of college basketball, trying to pull some more attention to that big event the ESPN puts on every single season. And the Buckeyes, and I bring up the Buckeyes that they might fall in the CFP rankings because of what Georgia did over the weekend and also what Michigan did over the weekend as well. Now, some might say, Jay, it doesn't matter what anybody else does. It's the Ohio State Buckeyes. They should always be ranked number one. It's just what they are. They're undefeated. They're the best team in the country, especially at this point in November, at this point in the season. I'm like, okay, great, 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 great. That is definitely a thought. But I think more of the ideal and proper way to view this is there's a good chance that the Buckeyes could fall. Now, tonight, as I look it up, I do believe it is the Champions Classic. Uh, Michigan State plays Duke on ESPN at 7, uh, college basketball-wise. And then at uh, 9.30, Kansas plays Kentucky. Yeah, I know that, that Champions Classic travels around the country. Last year was actually in Indianapolis, and I got I was able to actually go to the, go to that game. Uh, last minute, got a free ticket, and uh, uh, it was a lot of fun to watch. But when it comes to the poll and the rankings tonight, Georgia won over the weekend. They beat Ole Miss 52 to 17. My gosh. My gosh. During a time and a period when many people thought that, hey, Brock Bowers might not be might not be back. Lad McConkey came back. And what do we find? Georgia keeps rolling. They beat a quality opponent woo, 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 by almost 40 points. Oh my gosh. Woo, they put the hurt. They put the hurt on Ole Miss over the weekend, and then um, Michigan. Michigan ended up um, beating uh, Penn State twenty four fifteen. Washington also beat Utah thirty five twenty eight, and uh, Oklahoma won. They were the number seventeen team in the country. Uh, Florida State won again. They beat Miami twenty seven twenty. Trying to go over and look at all the scores that actually matter to Buckeyes fans. It's possible. They might fall. And if they do, it's not the end of the world. Because as you look at the poll and at the rankings, we we don't need to look at the AP and the coaches' polls. Just look at the CFP. Because ultimately, that's the only one that matters. There are numerous people out there that will say, hey, I don't care about the AP or the coaches' polls. They don't mean nothing. The Sagarin rankings and all the other polls that are out, the Harris poll, if that's they don't, have, they don't really care about any of those other things. Why? Only one matters. 
college football playoff ranking. That's it. That's it. That's the only one matters. And so let's just say Ohio State falls in the poll right now. Let's just say it happens. It's possible. Is it the end of the world? No. There's a good chance Michigan will be undefeated November 25th. The Buckeyes will be undefeated November 25th. And the winner of that game will be number one in the country. Yes, one person said, period, point blank. That's it. End of discussion. Whoever wins that game, assuming both teams are undefeated at that point in time, will be undefeated. And I, I'm going to go even a step further and say they'll win the Big Ten Championship game the following week. I know Iowa's probably going to be there. They're not a good football team. They just fired their OC. Well, didn't fire him. He's going to get – It's it, it, some of these weird things happening in college football. Jimbo Fisher got fired. Brady – was it Brady Hoke is going to retire at the end of the season. Another coach recently, I think Mississippi State's coach, got let go. All of a sudden, Iowa said, hey, we're going to fire Brian Ferentz and let him go at the end of the season. Man, that's a weird way to lose your job. Man, I got six weeks to coach, and I'm I'm coaching at the school that my dad coaches at, but, man, at the end of this, I'm done. What kind of send-off is that? Weird, weird stuff going on right now in college football. And then this idiotic way to suspend the coach for cheating, three-game sideline ban. You cannot be on the sideline at the game at all. What is this? Make it make sense, because none of this makes sense at all. What does make sense? The winner of that game, Buckeyes and Wolverines, undefeated, will be undefeated Big Ten champ going to the playoff. Ranking don't matter. Doesn't matter. You get to pick the venue. And I understand there's privileges to that ranking at the end of the year. But right now, it don't matter. If they fall to two, if they fall to three, they ain't falling outside the top four. Not based on the way the committee views them. It's okay. All they got to do is keep winning. They're in the playoff and have a chance to win the Natty in the beginning of January. That's it. Thank you for tuning in to Locked on Buckeyes here on a Tuesday. You can follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at jstevens07. You can send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. This has been Locked on Buckeyes here on a Tuesday. I'll see you next time.